Growing up, I had dreams and aspirations, but always felt like the kid that didn't fit in. For the most part, I wasn't a bad kid, but when I made the transition into adulthood, I turned to the streets for guidance. This led to getting locked up in juvenile hall, doing time in CYA, and eventually a 120 month sentence in federal prison. I had a lot of time to think and reflect during my federal sentence. So I share with you what I learned, hoping I can positively influence someone else's life with Prison Talk. What's up? The Big Hurt 916. Getting down fresh out. Hit that like, hit that subscribe button, share the channel, because you know we bring you the real over here. Um, I've been seeing a lot of people talking about the connection between hip hop and the prison industry and um, whether or not these labels have investments with the prison industry and how it all ties in. Well, I've said it multiple times on this platform. I've uh, reached out to other platforms to speak about the connection between prison and the hip hop industry because uh, prison is one of the only industries that cannot advertise directly to its consumer. It has to have a vehicle in which to entice, um, to induce, to, uh, to trick, to cajole a person into committing a crime so that they will have a room to fill, a bed space to fill. For those of you who don't know how the prison industry works on a private level, which the private side of prisons have pretty much taken over a lot of the state prison contracts in a number of the states, is these private prisons come in, they fund their prisons um, through investors, they have uh, private contracts in which they have with vendors for food, for uh, private contracts for uh, products, goods. Um, these prisons are basically many work plantations. Um, when I was Behind the wall, it was Whackin' Hut, um, CCA, um, Unicor. You can look all these people, all these institutions and these people up, Whackin' Hut, um, these industries. They're all for profit prison setups. Um, and when you look at the people who are in prison once they get there, it totally blows. It will, I'm not there no more, thank goodness. It blew my mind when I looked at the behavior. You have hard, so-called hardcore gangsters, um, guys who, you know, some of them had Rico, some of them had conspiracy, some of them had, um, you know, really serious charges, or in prison, and a lot of them have chosen to go work in the factories for what they consider survival so that they can have money on their books. You have a lot of guys who re refuse to work for the system, so therefore they they have a job called pay you no mind where you make maybe, you know, four or five bucks a month. They hustle and they work for maybe an hour a day. But these prisons, are for profit. They're in the state and they're in the feds. I witnessed them in the feds. Unicor. You got guys running down to these factories in Unicor. They're making uniforms. They're making furniture for Ikea. They're making, back then they're making parts for the military. Um, they're doing all kinds of stuff. Private labor, cheap labor. 
um, desk, office products. Um, some of these, you know, some of these institutions, they're doing a lot of agriculture, um, just a lot of cheap labor, uh, basically contracted through the prisons and that's what keeps these prisons going. You know, there was a saying that they said, uh, you know, utter in the institutions was like, man, if nobody went to Unicor, the prisons were shut down. And for the most part, they were probably right because Unicor was the profit side besides the, 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 the person being there, the chattel, which covered the cost of the bond. See, you have the person there, which is a chattel that secures the bond, which allows the prison to get the contract, to, to get paid for the stock uh, owners to get their money. But the labor is what produces a profit. And see, without the labor part of it, the prison wouldn't be a profitable model. So these private prisons are structured very meticulously and they have it, you know, um, to where it runs like a well-oiled oiled machine and they need um, uneducated, um, uh, poor um, people with a lot of time that they know they'll get labor out of them for a good amount of time and that's why they set these things up. And like I said, they can't advertise like, uh, you know, McDonald's or Trader Joe's or Starbucks, you know, we're hiring. So what they do is they have to enlist the entertainment industry um, to get involved. And um, <clears throat> if you look at the, the music and the message and, um, you know, they've conditioned the the black woman to basically have babies out of wedlock all day long, which means you have multiple kids being raised up by a single mom, very emotional, very weak, um, a lot of feminine tendencies. They you know, eventually get caught up and um, either join a gang, commit a crime, or get involved in something in the streets. Few make it to an NBA, few make it to the NFL, few make it to college, but a lot of them um, are products of single moms trying to raise multiple kids by multiple baby daddies. And these kids, they're um, listening to the music, they're emulating what they see on social media and the videos. And, you know, one of the first um, cases most of these kids ca catch is uh, possession of a firearm. Possession of a firearm, because, you know, drugs now, it's not really the big one. They got to get you on the possession of the firearm illegally. And maybe you get probation the first time, but you have a felony. The second time, um, ex-felon in possession of a firearm, mandatory five, seven years, some places, you know, depending. Feds five to, you know, seven years. Um, if you're, I don't know what it is in the state, in the other states it might vary. It depends on your, your litigating circumstances, but... Um, yeah, you know, so a gun, they've conditioned young black men to think of a gun as like having a wallet. You know, if you, if you have a couple of dollars in your pocket, you should have a gun and now it's so easy to get. So they got the ghost gun. So you got all the little, you know, black kids, you know, brown, you know, Hispanic kids, you know, carrying guns, like it's, you know, the thing to do and that's highly promoted. And so, um, the rite of passage for a young man has been heavily concentrated on somehow committing a crime to validate your manhood. And I, I uh, have challenged this multiple times and, 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 and put out tons of videos talking about like prison ain't shit. You know, these guys get out and they want to brag and act like they were this and that. And, you know, it's really disgusting because there's nothing to be said of somebody who claims to be the man in prison when on the street they're 
a dope fiend or they're living at their mama's house or they can't take care of their kids they're a stress case they're you know they're weak they can't hold down a job but yet they're the man in prison and they want to brag about it and act like what they did in there was something that should be valued when in all actuality you should never went to prison and, you know i i don't glorify it i don't act like it's something that you should want to follow in my footsteps I would like to see you, by listening to the stories, totally go the opposite direction and learn a trade or get involved in something that's educational that will keep you out of the prison and off the streets. And hopefully um, you'll be smart enough to you know, have a child with a woman that you can have a relationship with so your child has both parents there and you can break the circle, I mean, uh, break the cycle, you know, break the curse. If you are one of those, you know, people who didn't have a father in your life or a mother in your life, but uh, prison is nothing. It's dysfunctional, it's racist, it's ignorant, it's low frequency. Um, there's nothing to be gained by that experience, you know, unless you really go outside yourself and it takes a strong individual to get in there and run your own program, you know, and, and a lot of times it's hard to do that when you're involved in politics and depending on where you're at and the type of shit they pull you into. It's just a lot of bullshit, but there is a connection. Um, I, I can't sit here and say I know executives that are in control of the labels who have directly, you know, involved in stock in these prisons but you have um the narrative which is you, you could just listen to the narrative um just low vibration um black artists they even you know invite them to the, the white house now i mean you got glorilla you got you know some of these other artists you know I don't, I think, I don't know if Sexy Red went there too, but just this other really ghetto, non-representative of the black culture. But that's what they promote. That's what they act like is hot. And you have other young women looking up to these women and, and who are just the worst role models you could pick. You know, it's, it's like saying you, you, you invite a certain group of members from a particular set and they're just up and, and that's who you say is the representation of the your constituents and that's how they perceive us you know they really are clowning they're looking at them women and saying like this is uh, this is like a joke you you guys are just so uneducated un um intelligent that we're just gonna pick these and just you guys still uh allow us to control your your narrative with these people who we we've chosen to um represent your your typecast it's embarrassing man it's embarrassing you know i was so embarrassed by having to do all the time i did thinking about all the things my grandmother told me the things my mom told me and yet i still made dumbass choices and i wonder i used to always ask myself how did i still continue to make stupid choices when i knew better and then i'm looking around the people i'm around and i'm like wow you know i was fortunate to meet some good dudes but for the most part the conversations your ambition your goals it's like dude i should have never this is this is not me i shouldn't have been here and you know i wasn't at a camp you know a lot of these dudes are in dorms you see them in dorms and shit. i never made it to no dorm I was in straight cell living and the people I around were pretty high powered and it wasn't like I wasn't riding the white collar guys or the guys who got to go to the camp, the guys who, you know, had these little crimes where it's nonviolent. All my shit was violent. All my shit was very aggressive crimes, you know, and they, they, you know, they knocked my head off of that, put me in, you know, places where there were other people with that same type of background. And so... You know, I look at opportunity, um, resources, all these things make a difference. 
when it comes to success and the music that um, is the narrative for the young people directly correlates to the behavior and the actions going forward. And if we want to change that, you got to be conscious. You know, you're not going to tell the music industry that, oh man, you shouldn't make music like that because they're going to, they're about their money, man. And they know that, you know, certain kids in certain areas, they're going to look at it as entertainment. But other kids, that's their life. They live that shit. And as a result of living it, they're going to eventually go to prison. You know, I, I've, I've, you know, seen it firsthand when I was in juvenile hall and I'm like, damn, you know, and I remember my mom coming down there and, uh, you know, looking around and she was just very embarrassed and just upset and I was embarrassed, man. And a lot of those same dudes. Fast forward a couple years later, when my dumbass went to YA, they were up in there too. <laughs> you know, they had eventually worked their way up the ladder. Everybody on swole, everybody still gang banging. And my grandfather told me, he said, you know, once you come to these places, man, a lot of times you keep coming back. And that's what he told me, man. And I still remember that. And I'm sitting there, you know, at a visit. And I'm just like, looking around and you know I'm, I'm about to go do almost three years fast forward <laughs> i gotta go do another 120 months i still haven't learned my lesson man and um you know it's a cycle once you get caught up in there it's a cycle and until you can somehow break that cycle and separate yourself from the culture that's influencing your behavior you're, you're 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 pretty much going to be trapped because if you can't break away from that and you can't change your friend circle you can't change your frequency you're, you're not gonna you're not gonna be able to change you have to let go of all those things and make a clean break if you want to really elevate yourself and um you know this this pipeline from the hood to the prison system, man. It's just disgusting, man. You know, I remember seeing guys like, oh man, did they need the homies come up? You know, where the homies at, man? And it's like, dude, it's like, they're they're like normalized with this shit. It's like the homies show up, you know, you do your time. It's just a part of just living and no big, nobody's even questioning the laws. Nobody's going to the law library. None of these dudes are even, you know, thinking about how to maybe fight their case. You got a couple smart ones that were in the mix, maybe in the game, but they were, they, these dudes are sharp and they low key, they do their thing. They do enough to not get sweated, but they trying to get up out of there because they know they would get money on the street and they ain't trying to sit up in there. The dudes who weren't really doing a whole lot on the street, they're content with prison. That's who you got to watch out for. The guys who are living better in prison than they were living on the street. Those are the guys you got to watch out for. I had already seen a, a lot of things on the streets. I was trying to get back to the streets. I wasn't trying to sit in prison and do all my time. I was looking for a way out. But a lot of these guys, they're cool. They're cool with walking a track. They're cool with doing spreads. They're cool with just, you know, doing whatever they're doing on the cell phones and, and kicking it. They're cool with all that. And uh, those are the people who prisons are made to uh, service with the with the private industries, with the with the Unicor, with the, the 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 jobs and the labor. Like I said, they're modern day work plantations, man. They just change it up a little bit, you know. It's still, you know, the same shit. Most of the guys ain't got their GED. You know, a lot of these guys have very low education, and they pretty much police each other. I've seen dudes fight guys because they're trying to get educated, go to college and, and do something while they're in there. They're mad because they're not hanging out like they're hanging out. And, and and it reflects on the street, you know? It's like, dude, you're on the street and, you know, you're running around and, and you're doing this behavior that they're programmed. You don't even know why you're doing it. You don't even know why you have a gun on you. 
Yeah, you can legally have one. I mean, shit, more power to you, man. I'll, yeah, legally carry one if you can, if you're of age and you can get your, you know, get your license there. But just to have one to think that, hey, I'm a, you know, I'm a shooter. Man, and then you get the music and you're thinking, oh, man, I'm like this dude and those rappers, man. It's like, dude, it's, it's a dead end. Most of those guys got professional security. And the ones who didn't have professional security, you see, they're all dead. They done knocked off more rappers in the last four or five years than the whole time I was growing up. There was only two rappers, major rappers, when I was growing up that really had, you know, major beef that had, you know, violence and death around them. That was Tupac and Biggie. Other than that, everybody else pretty much just, you know, it wasn't a whole lot of rapper death. But in the last five, six, seven years, man, there's been countless rappers murdered living that life, talking about that life, man. So the connection is bigger, and I can go deeper, deeper, man. But like I said, I don't have, I can't sit here and say, hey, this guy has stock, this guy has that. All I know is that you got a locked in group of people who are in prison, working in labor camps, buying shitty food, you know, uh, consuming shitty products and whoever has those contracts for the beef sausage, for the, for the generic Nikes, for the toothpaste, the hygiene, they're making a lot of money. Whoever has the food contracts to bring them, them damn steaks and, and, and you know, the, the, the low, the low tier steaks and the, the shitty chicken and all that stuff, the beans, and they're making a lot of money. There's a lot of money in that prison pipeline. And none of it's going to the hood. It's all being taken out the hood because they're taking all the little the little Negroes out the hood and they put them in them prison labor camps by their own actions, which they don't even know that their actions have been programmed by somebody who has invested interest in the prison system. Let that sink in. Swallow that pill, see if you like it. You maybe have an uncle, maybe you have a cousin, maybe you had a dad, a brother, somebody in prison, and you was like, oh, the system, this and that's right. Look, man, you, they, they got you doing shit. You don't even know why you do it. Go back and start writing down some of the lyrics of some of the songs you thought were cool, and you realize really how low frequency and how programmable those lyrics are in your subconscious to make you behave a certain way. This shit is deep. They got you on autopilot. You are a straight zombie until you wake up in that cell and you're like, man, what was I doing? I was out here, man. You was zoned out. You zoned out, man. They got it down to a science, man. If you listen to jazz, if you were out here listening to the, the jazz and, and smooth R&B all the time, you wouldn't be thinking about hurting nobody, carrying no pistol. You, man, shit. They got you. They know what they're doing, man. And the music industry is for sure embedded with the prison industry because they got to have a commercial. And it's your local rapping gang member or uh, they so they you know there's some of them they call them uh, social gangsters, terrorists, whatever you want to call them. They're using those people to put their own people in these prison camps. Big Herc 916, fresh out. Stop walking around with a crusty butt, smelly ball sack, and a funky hoo-ha. Big Herc said wash that ass. Pick you up a t-shirt at freshoutseries.com. Hey, what does your shirt say? Cancel culture. Why is it crossed out? Because over our Fresh Out, we ain't with that bullshit. Pick you up a shirt at FreshOutSeries.com. Lockdown's over. Get your yard time in. Exclusively at FreshOutSeries.com.